My name's Alan Hart and today I wanted to do a video about central heating systems. Different types of systems, so gravity, hot water systems, fully pump systems and then combination systems as well. I'm going to try and add a few different types of boilers in as well. So we've got a combi boiler here. This, is, this, this combi boiler has actually got a flue heat recovery system on top. Also look at standard combi, look at hot water cylinders, maybe look at some warm air as well. So a little bit of system design and a little bit of boilers, so just, just a bit of a mix really. So, so let's, let's go and have a look now. Going back in time to my days as an apprentice really, um, floor standing, floor standing boilers, open fluid. A lot of the time these boilers was gravity, gravity hot water pumped heating. So what you'd normally find is, you'd find a couple of pipes there, like that. They might come out this side or that side. And they could be, normally they'd be in 28 mil and they would go up to a cylinder upstairs and they would just work on gravity. So as water gets hot, water rises, goes up to the cylinder and then comes back down when it's cool. It takes quite a long time for water to get hot and it's not controlled very well either. Um, I'll do a little drawing about that um, and I'll show you I'll show you what I mean. Um, what you a lot of time what you found with these as well is you might find that the pumps inside the boiler or the pump might be under the floor near the boiler as well and the pump would be for the central heating part of the system so we'll have a quick look now um, I'll do a little drawing and I'll show you about that and then we'll move on to looking at the updated version then of when we went on to a fully pumped system so we had S plans and Y plans, so we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at that then as well. So let's have a look now. This is a gravity hot water system in the most basic form. So we're at the moment here, we haven't got any heating connected to this. How this works is the boiler fires up, the hot water goes up the pipe there, so that would be the flow into the cylinder and then as it cools down it would come back out and back to the boiler and that there's no pump on that and that just works on gravity and how that is controlled is the, there's only the temperature control on the boiler so when the boiler gets up to temperature it'll shut off so the control is it's not great but that's your basic diagram and then this side of it that's your, your cold water storage tank. And then you have your cold water going into your cylinder and your hot water coming out to, to the taps. And then for a heating system, we would have two more pipes on here and you would have a pump on and then that would pump around the heating. So I'll show you, I'll show you a diagram now of this now with a, with a pump on it and then we can, we can see how that would work as well. Sorry about the drawing, um, it's, not, it's not perfect. But if we imagine that is the boiler, if we was gonna add the heating now onto this, we'd add two other pipes. So this one would be the flow and that would be the return. What you'd often find is the pump would actually be on the return back into the boiler and then this would go around your heating system and you'd have your radiators on there. Could also be a one pipe system as well sometimes. Um, and that's how that would, and that would fill. So to get water into this system, normally you would have from, from them pipes there going up in your airing cupboard, you'd have a pipe going off there. That would be your expansion pipe and that'd go into a central heating header tank and then you'd have off there you would have a cold feed and that's how you'd get water into your gravity part 
of the heating system and then that would fill the heating via the boiler. So if we had a one pipe system connected onto this boiler, we'd have a flow and it would go all the way around the circuit and back to the boiler. And off that pipe, these would just have T's and they would be connected underneath, maybe under the floor. So it would always be one continuous circuit. Obviously these are not gonna work as well because they're only gonna go into the radiator via gravity. So for instance, if you wanna try and power flush a one pack system, you'd really struggle and really it's almost impossible because you can't get the machine to go through the radiators. So that's just a basic diagram of how a one pipe system would work. I'll now show you a two pipe system as well. So again, apologize for the poor quality drawing, but this is the two pipe system. Just a basic three rods on this. Um, so you've got your, your flow again, and then it's two pipes. So you've got flow and return there, inside of each other. And when it goes into radiators, you've got the flow that goes into radiator, and then you've got a return that comes out of radiator that then goes back to the boiler. So if you shut all the rest of the radiators off, and you just had one radiator on, then the pump will be flowing through that one radiator. So for instance, if you wanted to do a power flush, you could shut all your radiators off, connect your power flush machine in, and flush that one radiator. And then you can open the next radiator, start to flush that radiator, close the previous radiator off. Um, and, and, and yeah, so you'd better flush the system better this is obviously a much better design because you can balance these radiators as well. So you can balance the flow around the system. So the, the radiator closest to the, to the pump or on the floor, you may balance this down. So it's only got a little bit of flow going through it. And then the one furthest away, you might have that more open to allow the heat to get to that one. So that's just a basic two pipe heating design. I'm now gonna look at heating systems that's got zone valves on and diverter valves. I'm gonna talk a little bit about diverter valves and zone valves and how they would be piped in to a system as well. Um, so we've got a hot water cylinder here. So normally that would be up in an airing cupboard and we've got a pump on, on system here, and then we've got a zone valve on here as well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some more drawings and I'll show you different, different ways of um, piping with zone valves and with controls, and also what the different valves do and which way the flow goes into the valves, etc. Yeah, so let's have a look at that now. So when we have a look on a zone valve, often we'll see an arrow. So we know which way round the valve needs to go. So obviously the water would be pumping this way. Sometimes you'll have an A and a B on them. And normally the A would be there and the B would be there. So again, you'd be pumping towards that way. When we look at a standard three-way valve, so a diverter valve, we have an A and B, we have an A and then we have a B. So A and B is the flow from the boiler. And then you've got A, A, I always remember A for air and then B, B for bath. So A for the central heating and B for the hot water cylinder. So you flow up, you call in for hot water, it'll go this way 
and it'll go round the hot water cylinder. If you're calling for heating, it'll go that way and it'll go around the central heating circuit. If you had an open vent heating system, you'd have your flow coming up from your boiler and then you'd need an expansion and you'd need a cold feed and then you'd have your pump and then your pump, that's your flow and that would go to the valves so if it was an S plan or a Y plan that would then go to, to them valves so points to um, remember 150 maximum and these need to be behind the pump and then you've got um, this is for a backseat boiler so it's got a minimum head of water so you'd have to check in installation instructions for that and then you've got your expansion pipe normally minimum that would be 450 so I apologize again for the poor drawing so what we've got here we've got as header tank for as heating this pipe here is the expansion pipe from the water level there to that pipe we want a minimum of 450 mil and then we've got us cold feed and when we go down here they need to be within 150 mil of each other so how I remember this is OCP so OCP so open vent cold feed pump and then to the control valves whichever type of valve we're going to be using and then if we follow that on onto a Y plan we'd have us pump pumping towards A and B B B goes to hot water so B for bath and A A for air rads so that's how, how you would pipe so that's for your Y plan if we look at an S plan system so the this bit of it is still the same so we'll start from the pump and we go towards so these are our zone valves now so A and B so that's just hot water and then that way would go to the radiators so that would be when you see two zone valves in like an airing cupboard that would be an S plan what you'd also need on this you'd also need a bypass so before the zone valves you'd need a pipe that then goes back to the return on the heating on the heating system or on the the main return because what what could happen is if if this valve here closed so the the, the rods are now up to temperature and if the hot water is now up to temperature the pump would have nowhere to pump so you would you would need a bypass sometimes you'll see like a gate valve on these and then sometimes you'll see an auto bypass we, we would not normally we'd want an auto bypass so we've looked at gravity heating systems a little bit um, we've also looked at s plans and y plans open vent systems there's lots of different types of systems, so you can also have sealed systems. If you had a sealed system, you'd have no header tank, and then you'd have a filling loop where you fill the system up. Normally, they would be on a, like a combi style system. So you, you can have a normal uh, standard boiler on a sealed system. You'd have to check the manufacturer's instructions. Um, but what I'll do is, I'll, we'll move on to combi boilers and I'll show you a seal system on a combi boiler and then that just gives you an idea of that um, this, so I'm just doing a few different a few different things there's many many different types of, of, of heating design and systems there were I think there were M plans and C plans and N plans and, and all, all sorts of different plans I can't remember to be honest because I've never I've never fitted any of them types of systems um, so yeah so now what we'll do is we'll have a look at um, a combi boiler and how a combo boiler system would work so let's go and have a look at one now 
So if we, if we look at a combi, a combi boiler system, then it's it's so much more simple because it's all built into box really. So you've got a white box on the wall, and it, and it's all built inside. So you've still got a diverter valve inside. You've still got a pump. Instead of a header tank, you've normally got an expansion vessel. So we can have a look at that. And then when you look on them normally, they'd have a pressure gauge. So it's got an expansion vessel inside. And then what we need to do, we need to fill the system up. So we need to manually fill um, a combi boiler up or a sealed system. We would manually fill the system. Um, so we'd normally have a filling loop below. So we'll have a look underneath now. I'll show you bottom up boiler here and then we can see what the pipes do. So we'll have a look now. So when we look at combi boiler, what we normally have, will have a flow pipe. So if we imagine on the normal Y plan system, that has already come through your Y plan and that's now going to the radiators. This pipe here is the hot water. So that if you imagine your hot water cylinder, that would be what came out of the top of the hot water cylinder. On this one, we've got the cold, the cold pipe is there. So that's the cold mains. So the cold mains is going that way into the boiler and then the hot is going that way out of the boiler. And then we've got the return pipe. So the flow is going that way and that's feeding the heating system. And then we've got the return and the return is going back. So that's going back into the boiler. So we've got as cold mains here. Instead of having the header tank up in the loft, we're gonna manually fill the system instead. So that's cold water comes in, it goes round the filling loop and it goes into the heating system. So them two valves at the moment are both turned in the off position. But if we turn them facing the pipe work, then we would be filling the heating system. And we'd normally fill this to around one bar. And I'll just, um, I'll show you the, uh, I'll show you the um, gauge on the front of the boiler now. So this is the pressure gauge on the boiler. Also some boilers will have a display on the front which this has and that will also read the pressure for you to fill it up. So what this has, instead of having a header tank up in the loft, we have an expansion vessel that's built inside the boiler. So this is a white box that contains all the components. So it's got an expansion vessel, it's got a pump, it's got a diverter valve, it's got the heat exchanger, and it's all in, it's just in one box. So it just makes it nice and easy to install. One thing I thought I'd show you on this filling loop is, this has got a non-return valve in here. So the one, the, this, the one with the non-return valve goes on the cold. So what we what we wanted to do is we don't want central heating water to go back into the cold main. So always make sure you put these on the right way around. And also then when you come later to to top up the expansion vessel or drain the system down, you can do it from this valve. So it makes it so much easier. Most combi boilers work in the same way. So you've got a pump, you've got a diverter valve, and that diverts it rather to the heating system or to the hot water. In a combi boiler, you have a plate heat exchanger, which separates it, and that separates, so it's, so it's water to water. So one side's water, another side's water, and it's got a metal plate in between. And that allows, that, that makes it so the heating water doesn't mix with the um, hot water that's gonna come out of your tap. Now, this is a little bit of an exception to, to the rule. So this this has got built-in flu heat recovery. So there's there's a few boilers on the market that have that. Valent have one, Johnson and Starley have one, um, Airtag, Airtag they have, they have one as well, the economizer. Um, yeah, so how flu heat recovery works 
the cold water comes in and it goes round the flue. So if you imagine when when you when your boiler's on and your um, your flue gases go up through your flue, they're still warm. So what a flue heat recovery system does is the cold water will go round the flue in in however they designed it to do that, and it will then go back to the boiler, but it's warmer. So one, it's going to reduce your bills because you don't have to heat the water quite as quite as much, and the, the, they're really good. It's a good it's a good idea and it's a good design, but they're normally too expensive, so they've not really caught on too much just yet. That they are the future, I believe, um, in all honesty. Um, but we'll see we'll see see how that goes. Um, yeah, um, I think that's it really. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll show you, I'll show you a warm air, a warm air boiler. Um, so it's not really centrally designed, but it's old, old school really. I used to do quite a lot of warm air many, many years ago. So I'll show you a warm air boiler and just give you just a, um, an example really of how that works or an idea of how that works. So let's go and have a look at a, a warm air boiler now. It's a Johnson & Starley warm air unit. So it's a high spec J25. If we look at this, this is an open flue version. And when we look, when we look at this, I'll just have a look inside at the top here. We can see, so that's, that's like your, your filter, but we've got a fan there. And then that fan in there, there's an arrow down there, I don't know if you can see that arrow. So that arrow, that's blowing warm, that's blowing air down there. So it's actually blowing cold air down there. And that goes over the burner. So I'll show you that bit now, take care of yourself. When we look inside, we've got, we've got a gas valve. This is for the warm air. So this side of it is for the warm air. And then if you have a look at the other side here, that, that side is for the hot water. And it's also got a gas valve on there as well. I've not actually worked on one of these for must be 15 years or so. So I do apologise if if I get mixed up at all with any of this. But what you've got here is I believe that this is where the heat would come out on the bottom. And then you would have still like a flow and return really and then you'd have a return here a return duct where it'd go back in or it could be the other way around but um, as I say I can't remember I'd have to read instructions but I just wanted to just give you just to give you a little look at it really um, so yeah so that's your, that's your warm air unit so that's my attempt on video about central heating system design I hope you found it useful, thank you for watching.